everyone out there that is doing youth ministry, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. This is Let's Talk Youth Ministry. This is Kurt. This is AC. Let's do it. Let's go. Dude, welcome. I'm not, I'm gonna fist. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm a little bit under the weather. So if I turn over here and yeah, cough real loud, it's because I'm what not a committed super youth good. worker. Hey, dude, I do it all. You gotta for the keep it going. all for the kingdom. All for the kingdom. all for the kingdom. <laughs> you um, go like this. It's just a little bit of a coincidence. I'm super sick on my life group, seventh grade boys life group night. Mm. My co-leader is a little suspicious of me because yeah. he's like, really? You're super sick <laughs> on Wednesday night and you're going to leave me with 13 crazy seventh graders? Right. I shouldn't be here. I've been sick in bed for two days. I thought I was going to feel better today yeah. and I actually feel worse. So I'm going home. Sometimes right it's really hard down. though to just yes to sit back and but nothing. Part of my setback was last night I stayed – because I thought I was feeling pretty good. I yeah. stayed up till 2 a.m. I watched back-to-back two-hour episodes of History Channel, Sons of Liberty. Have you seen Sons of Liberty? No. Okay. Go to History Channel if you love America. If you don't love America, don't worry about it. Okay. Go to History Channel and watch the Sons of Liberty. It's a three-part miniseries. Wow. Each part is two hours. It's awesome. It's all about the Revolutionary War and the Boston Tea Party. Watch the History Channel for two hours. Yes. And that got me in trouble because I stayed up till 2 a.m. Okay. Now, speaking of Sons of Liberty and old things. Yes. I'm digging around because, you know, we meet. This is like the children's prop area. And I found this. It looks about as old as the Sons of Liberty. I have no <laughs> idea what it is. This screws off the top. This thing. Is it's glass. glass? Oh, yeah. Wow. And this screws off. I have no idea. It's like a little mini fire hydrant, but it's not a fire. So here's the deal. I'm holding this up here. All right. We're going to do a contest. We haven't done a contest in a long time or ever. If you email us at talkyouthministry.gmail.com, talk at gmail.com, talk gmail the first person to correctly, we won't know if you're correct or not. We'll have to, we'll have to trust you or we'll have to follow the link yeah. that you provide. But the first person to truthfully identify what this item is. Yeah. What is this thing? What's it used for? Screenshot. Take a I have screenshot. No idea. Um, we will send you a handful, so five or six, simply youth mystery resources. Okay. So I have books, DVD curriculum, maybe a code for some downloads. Yep. All they gotta do is email us at talkyouthministry at, at gmail dot com. Yep. The first person to identify what this is because I have no idea, but I really like it. It's like from American Pickers or something. Oh wow. Um, we'll give them an awesome prize package. All right. Yeah. Sound good. Uh, that's a weird. That's when weird. I was in junior bottom. high, that's like they had it mounted someplace. Oh. When I was in junior high, there was a show on TV called The Liars Club, and they would have three celebrities yeah. from different TV shows and stuff, guest celebrities every time, and they would give them an item like this, and they would each tell a story about what it, it what it was, and then the contestants had to guess who was telling the truth, oh. and if they guessed and they got prize money, it was awesome. The Liars oh, Club. That's a, it was so. It'd be that's a fun a youth good, group game. Yeah. It'd be a great youth group game. Yeah. For have your this leaders item. and volunteers to come up and try to make up a story. Yeah. And, but one of them's telling the truth. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. What are we talking about today? We are talking about. Well, we got. We're going to the email bag today. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, and we do twenty minute shows. We are dedicated to that twenty minute. Never mark. going over twenty minutes. Um, so. The one question that we want to tackle today is um, we had a question about a person who's six months in. They okay. are now taking over head lead of the youth ministry, and they're 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 six months in, or they're not six months in, but their first six months. They just wanted some information. What should they do for the first okay. six months? It seems it seems like we've talked about this at some point, but maybe I not. Think we I have it's a pretty show. popular topic. Yeah, I would say go back. Kind of look. We'll talk about it a little bit today, okay. but go back and uh, we've. We've done yeah. a show on it, I believe. Well, here's why we know it's a hot topic, because I don't know what the actual turnover rate is yeah. in youth ministry, <laughs> whether it's 18 months or two years. But what we know is there there's a turnover rate. Yeah. And youth ministry, you know, youth workers are constantly cycling through our ministry. And whether you're the point person or you're a volunteer, right? I mean, yeah. we, we've got brand new people today. Yeah who are in their first six months of ministering with our student ministries. Mm -hmm. Even though I've been here for 18 years, you've been here for seven years, Josh has been here. But we've got people today who yeah. they're in their first six months. 
But talking about the point person, let's do this. Let's each share a what to do in your first six months and a what, what not, not to, to do. do. Something something to do in your first six months and something to try to avoid <laughs> yeah. in your first six months or something not to do. So yeah. you go first and then um, – I would say something to do is uh, make connections, build relationships, get to know people. Um, I think it's easy for you know for you to come in and want to get to work right away and and see some things that that may need to happen and and move in that space. But I think it says a lot about a person who kind of slows down, stops, and says, "Hey, I need to get to know some people directly. I need to get to know the volunteers. I need to get to know the parents. I need to get to know, you know, w- whether you share a room with someone or." you know, the children's ministry or whatever, start building relationships. I think at least first six months, be intentional about it. It says a lot about a person who wants to come in and not just be this renegade, but a part of the church, a part of the vision, moving things forward. And I think focusing on building those relationships early says, makes a huge thing. Well, and think about, I mean, I'm going to assume for a second that a new youth pastor is new to the church. That's not always the case. Sometimes yeah. somebody's been going to the church for a long time and they get yeah. tapped on the shoulder. And, but let's just assume that you're new to the church. Yeah. Think of all the relationships you need to build. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's there's multiple. Yeah. You need to build relationships with students. You need to build relationships with volunteers. You need to build relationships with parents. You need to build relationships with the other church leadership, yep. right? The other pastors and staff members. Yeah. You need to build relationships with other people in the church who aren't parents and aren't on staff, but they're just, yeah. they're tithers, they're givers, they support the church, they want to be a, a cheerleader for the church, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's just, that's just five categories right I there think of people. I've I've seen a difference because I went from being on a team to leadership role and it's a different capacity. And so you have to build relationships because those relationships kind of change right. once you move from one spot to the next. Right. And so you're seeing people in a different light. You're you're in a different place. And right. so even that, building stronger relationships with you're people. Saying, you're saying if you're already at the church. Yeah, like you're already case, at the church. Already totally connected I was already to here, connected right. with people. But when my position changed, then relationships kind of change and right. I, I had to reach out and become more right. you know engaged right. in relationships that I that yeah. I wasn't really focused on yeah. at awesome. that level yeah. so okay so one thing to do in your first 6 months you're saying more than focusing on programs yeah. and all that focus on relationships yeah get some get some Starbucks dates some, okay you know lunch yep. dates on, on the calendar what's something that you would say don't do one thing not to do is belittle what has already been there, but celebrate what what has happened. Um, because again, that says a lot about your character. It says right. a lot about who you are. It says a lot about your confidence. Um, and it definitely shows an insecurity yeah. in, in, in where you are. Well, and there's nothing to be gained from it. Yeah. I mean, I can't think of anything gained by taking pot shots at the person that came before you or the stuff that they were doing, the programs that were in place. Um, and sometimes when you're new, people who do have a bone to pick with a previous leader yeah. will come to you and say, hey, you know, we're so glad you're here. Man, the last guy. And they'll unload. Yeah. <laughs> right? And that's and, and it is so tempting and easy to jump on that. To bandwagon. jump on that because yeah. now you're gain, you think you're gaining an ally. Yeah. But the truth is the people who are ripping on that guy. Yeah. They'll be the very first people very first to people turn against you, to rip on you as soon as they you you give them totally. cause, right? Yep. So look for every opportunity to celebrate and elevate. Ooh, that rhymes. Celebrate yeah. and elevate yeah. um, the the prior MC administration. Yeah. Right. I mean, we kind of. I mean, this is a, a goofy example. We kind of saw it with this president who. For far too long, yeah. blamed everything on the previous administration, yeah. right? Even though there was probably tons of truth in it, yeah. he did it so much that at some point he yeah. lost credibility when yeah. he could have just and a lot of people were like, like, "Okay, you know," a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon of, "Okay, right. let's let's hear what we're gonna do right do in the future." Yep. and that's just, I mean, you gain more respect by. By just carrying carrying yourself yep. in a position of, totally. hey, you know what? Those people did the best that they could. Yep. 
I'm going to assume the best about them and say they trusted God with all of their heart and everything that well, they did and, and moving things forward. And we just want to, you know, we're always, that. we're always standing on somebody else's shoulders. Yeah. And they're not always the broadest, most secure shoulders. Right. Yeah. But we're standing on somebody else's shoulders and yeah. we wouldn't be where we are. Yeah. The church wouldn't even have a youth group yeah. to let you run if in some part, it yeah. wasn't for the the people who it's led a, the youth ministry before we came yeah. around. Um, it's a setup. It's a setup. When you get in the mindset, you start thinking that it's just a setup. Yeah. Because the the people, I think you said it best. The people who jumps on that that train with you are gonna jump on the train with I, the next guy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You know. So you're saying for six months. Build relationships yes. and don't bag on the yeah. previous what was going on. Okay, yes. love it. Um, what about for you? me, I think the one thing um, I, I'm going to go what not to do and what to do okay. instead of what to do. I would say don't make changes. Don't make changes your first six yeah. months. <coughs> um, it kind of goes back to a little bit of honoring what came before you. Yeah. If the first thing you do is come in and start slicing and dicing. <laughs> Um, that's a little bit dishonoring of the person who came before you, yeah. right? Um, what you don't know is if you come in and start slicing and dicing and changing, everything in that youth ministry has a tail. Yeah. Some of it has a very long tail, <laughs> others a short tail. Everything in that youth ministry was started by somebody. Yeah. It's somebody's baby. Somebody was empowered to do it, to launch it. Yeah. Somebody feels really good about it. There's stuff in you, that youth ministry that that single thing is what is mostly keeping this volunteer anchored to your ministry. Yeah. And in the first six months, you don't know enough to know the history, it. to know where those tales, how yeah. long they are, who started what. <coughs> and so I would say because you want to just spend your time focusing on people, yeah, you've got time not to change anything. Yeah. You don't have to change anything. Um, now, no, that's good. The thing I would do though is I would say this: change something. Yeah. So don't change anything, but but change something. Yeah. And what here, here's here's why I say that is: um, first of all, they hired you for a reason. Yeah. And as much as the church hopefully understands that for the first six months you're going to pour into people, and you're going to get to know people. They also want to see the ball moved down the court. Mm -hmm. They want to see progress made, <coughs> especially if they released the person before you because there were some problems, yeah. right? There might be glaring things, a couple glaring things that you just have to change yeah. because they were unhealthy and they're what contributed to the to the to the the, the transition, yeah. right? Um, but there might be stuff that. Is just little nuanced little things <coughs> that the search committee, your senior pastor, the parents, your volunteers, yeah. that they go, oh, okay, this new guy has a. So I don't know what that is. Yeah. You know, look for this. Look for the the big thing that you might have to change. There might yeah. not be anything that you have to change. There might be something you have to change. If not, just look for one or two little things. Yeah. You know, um, the handouts are always on white paper. Yeah. You know what? Put them on a hot pink paper for a yeah. couple of weeks. Right, just a little change yeah. that makes people go, "Hey, hot pink handouts." This yeah. guy, this guy is this girl's creative. I think another quick change is get some meetings on the on the calendar that didn't happen before. Right. So I mean, yeah, bring some people in the loop that weren't nev necessarily in the loop before yeah. to brainstorm yeah. weekend to brainstorm. It doesn't mean you're like changing what's going on. You're just getting perspective. Right. And I think you're, sometimes that can be like, oh wow. Yeah. In you fact, know? that's a good thing. Maybe you maybe you add a couple things. Yeah. Don't get rid of anything yeah. because of the tale, yeah. the history. It's somebody's baby yeah. unless you have to, yeah. right? You might be told oh, in the hiring totally. process, hey, the first thing we expect you to do yeah. is quit <laughs> quit the... letting junior high boys chuck yeah. bowling balls off of the church <laughs> building, you know, right? I mean, okay, yeah. you, you make that. It, but it may be that you just, instead of changing anything, you just add a couple meetings. Yeah. You add a couple coffee appointments. You, you, you add a once a month Friday night hangout. Just yeah. something that shows people that you're going to do some things. <clears throat> I think if different. you do have to do something drastic, like because sometimes you do get put in a position, they're like, we need to, we need to get the ball rolling on these things. I think those, 
those start with conversation first. Yeah. And sometimes you have to direct your leaders in that space because yeah. sometimes, you know, the leader is blinded to the fact that we need to we need to do this, we need to right. do that. And you need to be like, okay, I want to make sure that I'm building allies with right. the team, with right. the people around well, me, and not <laughs> and, we, and not conspiracy. Exactly, conspiracy. Because when you're new and you're spending time talking to people, here's what you'll find out: their agendas come to the top. Oh yeah, like everybody has an agenda. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> has something that they're unhappy with, or a direction they'd like to see things go. Yeah, and you got to be real smart because real every, smart. which is why. I think, and this is maybe this is a topic for another time. I don't know if it's worth taking a whole show, but the whole idea of like a purpose statement Mm -hmm. and a mission, like here's why we exist, what we're going to do. It's wonderful when those things are in place because then agendas get thrown through the filter of the purpose statement and they get thrown through the filter of why our ministry exists and why we do what we do. And it's easy to then say, that's a great idea, but you know, it's Saddleback. Our, you know our purpose statement. Yeah. So that's, that's why we we probably wouldn't be able to do something like yeah. that. But man, that's a great idea. Yeah. It, 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 now oh, I'm not attacking totally. you. Totally. I'm just letting the 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 yeah. purpose statement kind of be the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey, I, I'd like to do that, but our purpose yeah. statement won't let us. And you're teaching. Hey, everything we do should be funneled through our purpose. Right. If it's not funneled through our purpose, yeah. then you get a lot of you get a lot of different small gr- you get right. a lot of different youth groups in one right. youth group. Exactly. And okay. We're all going in different directions. We're all done. Email us, talkyouthministry at gmail.com. What is this? If you identify it and if you can show us some evidence or something, you get a a decent prize package from Simply Youth Ministry. Also, email us a question, a show topic, or a specific youth ministry question um, to the same email address. Someplace right down here, there's a little button. You can subscribe to this little podcast and get it sent directly to you every single week. That is all we've got. Yeah. That should be about 19 minutes or 20 minutes. Oh, we're so close. We've got 17 seconds. We love you guys. Peace out.